All right. I lost permission from the recording. All right, sweet. Okay. So here we are. Here we are. All right. So uh, hi everyone in the legal creatives community. Uh, my name is Ali. I'm the CTO of Walkpick. Today we have Julie uh, with us on the creative track. Uh, she is a humorous speaker, communications coach, creator, and founder of Find the Funny Enterprises. When asked, what do you speak mm -hmm. about? She usually replies, my main message is improvising communication, and I do that by using three main tools, humor, laughter, and improvisation. As a humorous speaker and <laughs> communications coach, Julie Ostro teaches organizations and corporations team to use improv skills to improve creativity, communication, team building, problem solving, and productivity with her clients and within their organizations. Trained at the second city in Chicago, Julie teaches the benefits of using humor, laughter, and improv in all aspects of our lives, uh, including in the workplace. Having more than 20 years of corporate marketing communication experience, Julie is able to identify the trigger points of miscommunication and low morale in the corporate culture by infusing her corporate experience with her humor, laughter, and prof tools. She is able to guide organizations to communication, connection, and creativity, resulting in re-inspired teams and increased productivity. Uh, today, she, her presentation is listening to learn, using improv skills to connect and communicate with clients. So, Julie, I'll uh, take it away. Okay, thank you so much, Ali. Thank you for that intro. Um, getting everything set up for me. Um, hello, everyone out there in Legal Creatives land. As Ali mentioned, today we're going to be talking about, or actually, I'm going to be talking about um, using improv skills to help you connect with your clients. So, what happens when we're communicating with people, especially or prospects, it's easy for us to get caught in our head about what our own expectations are, agenda, what we have in mind to say, and what our plan is. And that's good. It's fantastic to have a plan. It's also extremely beneficial to uh, make room for the unknown. Unknown is in, in those spaces when we um, are open to listening. Now, what I'm going to do is flip over to a PowerPoint presentation. No, it's not going to be death by PowerPoint, I promise. It's not going to be a slide with a gazillion different bullet points. You, I know, Ali, you surprised me. We're okay. Just give me the handout. So, what I'm going to do here is just flip on over. Oops. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So I'll mute my camera. Okay. Good. All right. So as Ali said, that I'm going to be talking about listening to learn and with improvisation. Now, some lost art, but I believe there is an art to listening. So I'm going to say that again. Sometimes you've heard that listening is a lost art, but there's truly an art to listening. Listening is the key to understanding your clients and meeting their needs. Well, why is listening so important? As I touched on briefly in that mini intro there is that we can easily have our agenda, our plan, and our expectations of how a call or how an interaction with a client can go. But if we're not listening and open to what our clients have to say, we're missing out. We're missing out on meeting their needs and we're missing out on a connection. And when we are connecting with our clients, we're better able to understand them, we're better able to meet their needs. And what is improv? So some of you out there, a lot of you out there probably have heard improv, especially if you've worked with Tessa. So the word of improv or impro in, in some cultures. Improvisation is creating in the moment. And I believe that there are three main rules about improv. 
yes and, give and take, and being in the moment. Well, yes and can also be referred to as reflective listening. Say if someone offers you an idea, yes, that is a can of Coke, and I'm going to put a straw in it. It sounds like a very basic rudiment, but have to offer. Repeating it back and adding on to it is that art and practice of yes and. How does this apply with working with clients? They, for example, throw out an idea or a concern. If you reply with something as only what you were planning on saying, you're going out. So reflective listening at times, it does sound like you're just repeating what the other person says. But when you say, yes, I heard you say that you have an issue with uh, this family member, for example. What I hear you saying is you have an issue with this family member, and their eyes light up. He then you say, yes, and let's work together to fix that problem. So yes, and is reflective listening. You're able to add on to other people's ideas. And it, this is very important. Build, when we are uh, building that trust and that bridge with our clients, we have that connection. And we can better help them. And they're more open and more apt to um, be more open to you and probably be a return client. Some benefits of improv to be in the uh, what improv teaches us is to be in the present moment. I kind of touched on that a little bit um, with yes and because with yes and you are focusing on what the other person is presenting. It allows us to practice collaboration. It helps us to improve communication and connection. You might be thinking, well, collaboration. Well, that sounds more like a team building presentation. Well. Collaboration happens, or hopefully happens, when there are two or more people. I believe when there are two or more people in the room, we have all these opportunities for miscommunication. So that's why listening, being in the present moment, and focusing on collaborating and working together help us to build bridges. So we have yes and. Additional improv benefits. Healthy humor and playfulness help, help us to create a connection our minds to new possibilities and that opening to new possibilities touches on staying away from a written agenda, stays, helps us stay away from the, well, that's the way we've always done it mentality. Another rule of improv is to give and take. And I touched on that. So you, you, um, you can see that yes and and give and take are very similar. Yes and is that reflective listening. Give and take is building onto other people's ideas. Allows us to listen, create, and collaborate. And didn't rhyme on purpose. So to collaborate, not dictate. So what a client or even a coworker doesn't want to hear is this is the way you're going to want you to do it, and that's it. And that's the opposite of collaboration. So um, give and take allows us to collaborate. Being in the moment, being in the moment of improv, you can see that all the rules fit together. Give and take and be in the moment. Now, when I am in the moment, I'm not in the past. I'm not in the future. Oh, well, yeah, that's very zen. Yes, improv is very zen. It allow, being in the moment allows us to truly hear and sense what clients are looking for. If we what our own agenda and what we have planned in the future, it's going on in the moment. Think about this. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody, you share an idea, or maybe you were telling a story about where you were over the weekend, and they reply with something something completely irrelevant. Do you scratch your head and say, wait a minute, was he even listening? So what we want to do is be in the moment, remove that, and listen, um, and then you can um, create and collaborate together. 
So these three rules of improv, teaching it on again, yes and, give and take, being in the moment, and they lead to communication, listening and speaking, creativity and connection.